The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. we got a shortened holiday week. Markets closed on Friday for the July 4th holiday. Starting things off after quite a rough day on Friday to the downside. Markets in the green to kick things off with 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. S&P futures right now up 15 points, trading at 3,022. NASDAQ futures up 6 points at 98.72. The Dow up 188, 25,000. 138. The Dow getting a boost from Boeing this morning. They're going to begin testing the 737 MAX. We have oil positive 55 cents at 39.04. 10 year yield doesn't change much, folks. 0.65%. And gold contract right now, gold trading up $4 at 17.84. And as we start things off, let's take a look at the VIX this morning. Quite a day for the VIX on Friday, of course, up near 36. We were up there near 37 on Wednesday as we come into the July 4th shortened holiday week. 34.66 with a little bit of fear and premium, as you may expect, priced into this market. We'll jump over around to some of the indices, see where we are. We'll start it off with the S&Ps. Not long ago, last week, 31.45, Friday, we dipped below uh, 3,000 briefly last night on the futures to see where we were from Friday's collapse. We, be we began Friday opening bell as high as about 3,065, we'll call it ballpark. You were as high as 3,080 as of 7 a.m. on Friday. You end the day basically just above 3,000. We opened last night. Things looked all right. Pulled it up actually at like 605, 610. I can always tell myself when you when you really care about where the futures are going to open Sunday night, how much fear and how much uh, uncertainty might be priced into the market. And with an 80-point sell-off in the S&Ps on Friday, coming into a shortened holiday week, huge numbers in terms of COVID. We'll go over some of them in Florida. Florida, we're pushing average in almost 10,000 new cases a day. Texas, Arizona, big numbers across the board. And nonetheless, S&Ps last night opened only down about 10 points. I said, ah, not bad. Guess what? 7.30, I took a look. I said, ah, they're even. You pulled it up before I went to bed at 10 o'clock. I said, that's ah, positive. Uh, pretty muted action overnight for everything going on. We dipped to about 3,000, currently trading 3,018 in the S&Ps. The Dow, you see the action on the Dow. We trade from 25,600 on Friday. We end the session at about 24,900. And same thing, we opened at lows last night, 24,743. We're above 25,000 at 25,108. NASDAQ, a little bit of a different story, kind of hovering right where we finished last week, which was about 98.50. We dipped to 97.80 last night. Jumping over to crude, crude, look at that acceleration, right? From about, we'll call it four in the morning, we were trading at 37.60. You just climbed above 39 briefly, backing off a bit, 38.90 in the price of crude. Gold contract with some volatility on Friday for sure. Gold, Last night, 1790. We've sold off a bit in about the last half hour to an hour from 1787. Still great prices in that gold contract if you're a bull at 1780. And we'll jump to silver down 16 cents. Look at that little sell off. Watch out for that volatility in silver. And notes and bonds, a little bit of lower price, higher yield the 10 year right now. We'll start at negative three ticks. The 30 year, negative 11. But just for some context, as I said, as, as the yield usually sits where it has, there's your tenure. I mean, you could say since April 2nd, we've been sitting right at this level. You did get a huge drop in yield at around the beginning of June. That correlated to when you got the 10 year yield climbing as high as approaching nine tenths percent, but that was very short lived. This is a daily, and in the span of about four days, we came right back to about seven tenths percent or just under, as that seems where bonds are, or notes are pretty much comfortable status quo. All right, jumping around to other news stories we have coming up there. First one I'm going to start off with, uh, Health and Human Services Secretary Azar out there over the weekend warning, quote unquote, the window is closing to halt the coronavirus spike. 
Friday's numbers, folks, 45,000 on a daily basis, a record high number, daily new cases that brought the total cases in the U.S., 2.5 million across the country, Texas, Arizona, Florida, California, and Nevada, some of the hardest hit. I have friends out in Vegas. They're expecting some of those casinos maybe potentially could close back down. I don't know if things are going to close back down. I encourage everybody to wear a mask, folks. That will help us all out, okay? There's no reason why. Uh, most people, unless very few rare instances for health reasons that you can't wear a mask if you're out in public and can't social distance. You're outside, you're in your car, you're doing what you're doing. If you're just going to be around people inside and you don't have the ability to stay six feet away from them, if you can wear a mask, wear it because it's going to help us all out. It's going to help the economy out. It's going to help everything out. Um, these numbers, folks, they are stark. We'll start it off. Why not? I wasn't sure when we'd get into them. But let's kick it off in terms of these Florida numbers. You almost can't overstate. I mean, things seem bad in Florida. Uh, now, they weren't as bad as, you know, my hometown, my home state, Massachusetts. Very, very hard hit in the early stages. New York, uh, almost hardest hit. But it's remarkable that even in Florida, things seem pretty stark. Thousand cases a day. Uh, now dwarfed on this chart as the acceleration in June was from basically a status quo of 500 cases, maybe a 1,200 spike, back down to 617. We had 380 cases early May. We had 500 May 19th. I mean, that low, 379 May 27th. And now we've had 8,900, 9,500, and 8,500. Stark numbers, folks. When you get into, uh, in terms of testing, what we're dealing with, important numbers as well. Here are the number of people tested. All right, so we have ramped up these testing numbers in the last few days. Big numbers here getting tested. The thing to pay attention to, though, is the percentages. And the percentages we're still dealing with starkly higher, even with the raise in the numbers, which is why we now have 10,000 people. But even testing a total of 78,000 people on the 26th of June. Now, this is in the state of Florida. We're still dealing with almost a 13% positive rate. Uh, we were in very low single digits going back to the beginning of this month. It's stark numbers, folks. You tie it up. Um, I mean, even putting things on a countrywide trajectory, remarkable acceleration across the country in the last few days. You look at where we were, that case number above 45,000 at one point, you see the spike going on. And, you know, I hadn't looked at a map just of the world. This is quite a curve, folks, when you when you bring it to the economy, okay? Now, that's countries rising, all right? You get into it. We're talking about now 175, maybe 200,000 cases a day of this spreading around the world. The EU did an amazing job of crushing it. Uh, the U.S., not so much, obviously, as our curve spikes to 45,000 plus cases a day. But when you look to a global economy, you look to the U.S., and you see this number in terms of quite a radical spike in cases, this is not going anywhere anytime soon, folks, until maybe we come up with a vaccine. But there's still so many obstacles in terms of time and how that plays out. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But nonetheless, uh, wear some masks if you can, please. There's nothing wrong with putting on a mask, folks. It's not political. Things are becoming pretty stark, all right? Uh, it's not political to say I live in Florida. There's 10,000 cases a day. And it's frustrating to see so many people out where I am when I just go to the grocery store and I practice social distancing and I wear a mask and many people not wearing them. And uh, this is going to persist until. So let's jump around to some of the tech stocks as we wrap up this first segment. And then we'll go over what we have for the rest of the week. It's a shortened week, but we got a big week. We got non-farm payrolls on Thursday for the month of June. We have jobless numbers Thursday for the month of June. We have Chairman Powell and Mnuchin out there testifying tomorrow. We get Fed minutes on Wednesday. Lots of action. Microsoft basically flat right Many now. Many listeners have oh. heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 the prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets ticking negative a bit since I came on the air. We started the program. We're down about five points. You got the S&P futures positive by six now. NASDAQ and Q futures actually going negative. The Dow up 118, but you see that little bit of a sell-off. 15-minute bars to put it on a five-minute. Now, I said Boeing lifting the Dow a bit, but we've given up more than 100 points in Boeing over the last 40 minutes when you turn it turn it over to the S&Ps. We were as high just in the 8 o'clock hours, 3,026. You're talking about 13 S&P points as we approach 45 minutes to go until the opening bell. Okay, headlines out there. Chesapeake Energy, a pioneer in shale revolution, files for bankruptcy projection. Chesapeake going BK. Company said that $7 billion in debt will be wiped out through the restructuring. Watch out, folks. Starbucks, the latest company to pause advertising across social media platforms. We'll pull up Facebook's chart uh, this morning again, quite a week for Facebook last week. And guess what, folks? It is continuing this week. Facebook, not out of the woods to say the least. You see, we closed at 216 on Friday. You were as low as 206. That's early this morning at 7 a.m. You're currently trading at 208. I expect you're going to see some volatility on Facebook. We just gave back 40 bucks from where we were trading at on 40 to put things in perspective. Pre-COVID levels, that's right where we are right now. But we're going to open right now with a 208. Bid ask on Facebook, we were as low as 137 with the max pain area on the COVID low, we'll call it. But Facebook, so you got Starbucks out there, they're out there, and uh, quite the the echelon, the, the cascade of companies, you could say, last week that were piling on. But Starbucks, Coca-Cola on Friday said it's going to pause it. Unilever, uh, Twitter facing some pushback as well, and you had some big ad agencies uh, hitting that as well. So you got Facebook shares lower, Twitter to drill it down, you see the day that they all had on Friday, but Twitter going to open lower as well from about above 29, hit 28.07, Twitter at 28.28. And uh, it's good to see the free market holding these companies accountable, folks, because the atmosphere that they are fostering is not good, to say the least, for society in general. Uh, it's just a, a ranting, raving 
place that people like to voice their uh, disagreements, it almost feels like. And Facebook realizes that, and they are fostering that disagreement because it creates interaction within uh, their own platform, which leads to increased dollars. So Mr. Zuckerberg, he's got to pay the toll and answer for what they're doing. And it's good to see some of the companies that vote with their dollar bills voting to say, you know what, we're going to steer clear of that. Tom was talking about this on his program on Friday. It was interesting to say, well, well, where's that ad money going to go? Doesn't necessarily have to go uh, anywhere immediately. That's a five-minute chart back to a 15-minute. Google tight, quite a quite a tough week from 1475, closing out last week at 1359, but up a bit at 1361. You could see Google in terms of obviously a huge ad network that they could pick up some of that uh, revenue and Amazon as well. Amazon, some volatility from 2796. We're trading exactly 100 bucks under there at 2696 right now. But Amazon, uh, the ability to ramp up the advertising revenue that they bring in potentially with Facebook and Twitter having some problems for at least the next couple months, if not longer. Okay, other stories out there. We talked about Boeing getting into it. So they're going to begin the 737 MAX certification flight tests. And that begins today, sources said. You have Boeing trading higher, both pilots and test crews from the U.S., FAA, and Boeing are slated to begin a three-day certification test campaign for the 737 MAX on Monday. The test is a pivotal moment in Boeing's worst ever corporate crisis. Yeah, I would say so. Um, just uh, almost not even almost, criminal behavior in my opinion, what's going on at that company in the loss of hundreds of lives. The grounded, the grounding of those, it's amazing. I was talking to Tom, we're talking about almost 16 months ago that those planes got grounded. Time flies, folks. Uh, but Boeing, they're gonna begin testing those, three days of those tests and check out that pop on Boeing from 170 on Friday up to it looks like 180, almost $10 higher this morning. You're as high as almost 185. For some context on where we've been on Boeing, you were 350 pre-COVID, 89 on the low. But be wary of airline stocks in general, folks. Boeing's going to be around. We need a company as a country that makes airplanes. You can't have just Airbus out there. So Boeing is going to be around in some capacity. Um, but guess what? American Airlines doesn't necessarily have to be around. I mean, I think it was American last week that said that they're going to begin filling planes uh, max capacity as as. Who is going to sign up for that, folks? Be wary of these airline companies. It's going to be a long time when we have almost 50,000 cases of COVID a day coming out. Uh, I tell you, in Florida, it's very, very heightened. Okay, It may not be in many areas of the country if you're listening and you're not dealing with it. Very, very heightened. And I understand. People should be out. People should be able to be out. you got to have the economy open. You can't just shut it down indefinitely, period. Can't do it. But you also have to practice safe social distancing to make sure that you're not infecting people of high risk, that somehow we hopefully squash this curve and flatten this curve before we get a vaccine and we just don't wait a year or two. Uh, but packing a plane full of people, not going to happen, folks. There will be people on the plane traveling. But I can tell you from the state of Florida right now, I have to self-quarantine. If I go to the states of, what is it, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, what if I was gonna go to a wedding or something like that? Can't do it, I gotta quarantine, right? So I can't, I literally cannot travel because the state I'm in is being engulfed in COVID. Uh, that's gonna play out on these airlines and I would be very wary dropping a, a uh, catching a falling knife as they say. And uh, needless to say, the cruise ships as well. Yeah, be wary of those as well, folks. All right, jumping around to some other stocks making moves uh, today. So you got Gilead. They're out there pricing their remdesivir antiviral COVID treatment. Looks like it's going to cost for a full treatment about $2,300 to $3,000, depending on how you price it. To get into that, there it is, $3,120 per U.S. patient with private insurance, $390 per a vial to governments of developed countries and around the world. Private insurance companies will stand at 520. You're going to see a lot of that playing out uh, in terms of treatment, treatments and so forth. And you got Gilead up about 2.7%. G-I-L-D is their symbol. Now, that's the long-term chart. Talk about some volatility on this stock, right? From 65 to 82, back in between. But this morning, you're opening higher on that, 76.59 for Gilead from 73.73 last week. Hopefully that shows some promise because uh, the treatment would go a long way of making things a lot easier on a lot of companies uh, in terms of the economy as well. You get a treatment, right? Then maybe people aren't so afraid um, to travel, to be out there, to spend, and maybe there isn't such the need if there is a treatment. Okay, what else we have going on? 
Yeah, Delta, talking about airlines. They're going to possibly furlough 2,500 pilots due to the severe drop in travel demand. They're also offering some pilots voluntary retirement. We covered Bowie. Ah, Cody, I want to go over this. Cody making some big moves in the Kardashian uh, squad. So they're going to pay $200 million for a 20% stake of Kim Kardashian West makeup brand. They had already paid, I believe it was something like 500 million for a 51% stake in Kylie Jenner's brand. So they're out there uh, monopolizing the Kardashian brands. But guess what, folks? The market likes that. Check out that pop from 410 to 483. You know what else the market liked? Uh, that West name, Gap. How about that acceleration for Gap on Friday that they might be teaming with Kanye on his Wheezy brand? Excuse me. Okay, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps right now up about 8 points, 3,015. We'll come back from the break, see what else we have on tap for the short week. Non-farm payrolls on Thursday, jobless numbers on Thursday, going into the long weekend with COVID spiking. Dix at 35. It'll be an exciting four days of trading. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnn.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
my microphone. Shame on me. Thank you, my producer. You got the S&Ps positive by seven, NASDAQ negative by 20, the Dow positive 125. I mentioned oil right now positive 37 cents. Yeah, so it's a big week in terms of economic indicators. You got the Fed out there uh, tomorrow in terms of Jerome Powell and Mnuchin uh, testifying. And then on Thursday, a big data day for a Thursday going into a three-day weekend. And time flies, folks, in terms of the numbers. If we start seeing 50, 60, 70,000 cases, a very real threat when Florida goes from almost 1,000 to 10,000, 5,000 to 10,000 in an instant, going into a three-day weekend, uh, watch out for some volatility as we get those non-farm payroll numbers on Thursday. The estimates for non-farm farm payrolls on Thursday for the month of June, anywhere from about even to 9 million jobs added, maybe a decrease of 500,000. It's anyone's guess. You know, the last number we missed dramatically, right? What did, what did May's numbers show? Uh, an increase of a couple million jobs or something like that? The market was like, whoa, already in May we're adding jobs? Is, is the V-shaped recovery much quicker than we thought? Huge miss on those numbers. Uh, Always anticipating that number Thursday, 8.30 a.m. I'll be on the air live for those. Always a great day. Uh, and we also get at the same estimate, we also get uh, initial jobless claims at the same time on a Thursday going into a three-day weekend with COVID numbers spiking. So look for some volatility as we come into the end of the week. With that in mind, as we say, we always talk to our man Kevin Hinks Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to kick things off at 10 o'clock when I'm on the air with Tom saying the, the VIX, you know, quite quite a gift it could be at 35 coming into summer trading. Uh, be wary, though, folks. There's a reason why that VIX is at 35 coming into summer trading. Uh, still relatively low price compared to where we were. But this is price and in some big moves, folks, every three days. So watch out as we come to short S and P's positive by three. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade What You See next. Right back.